respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Days after days have passed, and weeks and months, and here we are again, enjoying one of the blessed seasons of the year. A blessed season that comes as an introduction to yet another blessed season. Just a few days ago, the blessed month of Sha'ban started. And Sha'ban for the Muslims has a special taste because it paves the way to the blessed season of Ramadan. It's an opportunity to train oneself to receive Ramadan, to enjoy the nearness of Allah, to taste the sweetness of faith. So when the season of Ramadan starts, people start it with souls that long to obey and worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. And thus, they strive hard, performing acts of obedience and worship to their Lord. It is for this reason that our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam singled out this season of Sha'ban, this month of Sha'ban was something which, which he did not do in all the other months except Ramadan. There was an act of worship which was famous, which was known amongst the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing it during this month. It is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Aisha radiyallahu anha wa ardaha that she said, I have never seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fast a complete month except for the month of Ramadan. And I have not seen him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fast during any month as much as he would fast during the month of Sha'ban. So now, let me address myself and yourselves with a question, a question to all of us who strive hard to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to adhere to his sunnah, to follow into his footsteps. Are we going to pass the practical test during the month of Sha'ban in imitating him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this regard? Are we going to fast as much as he fasted or come as close as possible to his practice? Now, what is so special? What is the wisdom? What are the reasons behind the Prophet wasallam fasting so much during the month of Sha'ban? There are many reasons, but I'll list few of them. One of them is to make up any shortage in his optional volunteer fasting during the year. The Prophet ﷺ would either fall sick or go on a battle or busy in one form of the, or the other and thus would not fast during some months. So some said that he would gather all during the month of Sha'ban to make up as much as possible from that shortage. And Imam al-Shawkani on the other hand said, since Sha'ban is followed by Ramadan and Mara'a, Ramadan is a month which is mandatory. It's one of the pillars of Islam. It must be fasted and therefore he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, could not fast anything optional. 
as he would in other months, and therefore he fasted a lot during Sha'ban to make up anything that he would have fasted had Ramadan not been a month he had to, month, uh, to fast. Another reason is that the month of Sha'ban is a period during which the deeds are raised to Allah the Almighty. Al Imam al Nasa'i reported, and it was classified as, it, as sound, Hassan, by Al Imam al Albani on the authority of Usama ibn Zayd, radiallahu anhu. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding Sha'ban, it is a month during which the deeds are raised to the Lord of the worlds. And I would like that my deeds are raised while I am in the state of fasting. So we do not know during which time during Sha'ban or of Sha'ban the deeds will be raised. So he was fasting as much as he could, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he, or when it coincides that the deeds are raised, he would be fasting. Now, brothers, sisters, this period is a crucial period. It's a season with which we conclude the year. It's a time during which our deeds are going to be raised to Allah. So how are we going to be concluding our last year? What state would we like Allah Azza wa Jal to see us upon when our deeds are being raised to Him? It's a serious moment or rather period. And we have control over it. We can make the difference of how we conclude this year. So we need to take heed and strive hard and make this difference regarding our past year by exerting as much effort in worship as possible. Another reason behind fasting so much during the month of Sha'ban is that it is a period or a month about which people are heedless. Usama ibn Zayd, and this is also reported by an Nasa'i, classified as sound by Al-Albani, he said, I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the reason behind him fasting so much during the month of Sha'ban. He said, it is a month about which people are heedless between Ramadan and Rajab. Or rather, he said, Rajab and Ramadan. And that's why I like to fast so much. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali commented on this saying, The month of Sha'ban is surrounded from two ends by Rajab, which is a sacred month, one of the four sacred months. And Ramadan. And therefore people exert a lot of effort during Rajab and naturally during Ramadan. And become heedless about Sha'ban. And then he said, many people mistakenly think that fasting during the month of Rajab is more virtuous than fasting during the month of Sha'ban. And this is not the case. What is so special about fasting during a period when people are heedless? Ma'qil ibn Yasar radiallahu anhu narrated, and this is reported by Imam Muslim, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ibadatun fil harji ka hijratun ilay. An act of worship 
during the time of Harj. Harj is trials. During the time of trials is like one migrating to me. Why is this the case? Because during the period of trials, people have the tendency to follow their desires and become heedless of their religion. And therefore, the one who firmly holds on, who sticks to his religion, who adheres and who approaches that period with acts of worship, resembles the one who deserts people in the period of Jahiliyyah and migrate with his actions to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last point I would like to state here regarding the reasons behind fasting so, lot, so much in, in the month of Sha'ban is that it's a period of training particularly regarding two acts of worship. The first one is naturally fasting, which is stated in the hadith. When one fasts so much during the month of Sha'ban, he raises his momentum. So when Ramadan starts, he finds it easy to fast. It, become, it facilitates fasting during the, during the month of Ramadan because he's already enjoyed the spirit of fasting and trained himself. Another act of worship is what Ramadan was given as a name in the Quran. Shahru Ramadan. Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. It's the month of Quran. And so was the month of Shaban. It was given the title, the month of reciters. Suhail al-Hadrami, one of the great tabi'in, said, Whenever the month of Sha'ban would start, the companions would focus on nothing more than reciting the Qur'an. And that's why it became known that Sha'ban is the month of reciters, those who recite the Qur'an frequently. We ask Allah Azza wa to enable us exert all efforts in various acts of worship and draw as near as we can to Allah Azza wa Jal and try to earn His pleasure during this month and prepare ourselves for the great season of Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين وبعد The month of Sha'ban is a divine gift from Allah Azza wa Jal to this Ummah. It's a gift which Allah Azza wa Jal granted the Muslim nation. In it is a blessed night which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about the importance of which. In the book of Al Imam al Tabarani and classified as authentic by Al Albani, Mu'adh ibn Jabal anhu, narrated that the Messenger وسلم, said, Allah, the Almighty, looks at all His creations. On the night of the middle of Sha'ban, and forgives all his creations except for two types of people. One is a polytheist, and the other 
is one who harbors spite, hatred, and enmity towards another Muslim. It's a golden opportunity to make up the shortage between you and Allah. And it's also an opportunity to make up and reconcile between you and those with whom you have disputes or fights or disagreements. Those with whom you sever ties. And if they happen to be relatives, then it's more vital to reconcile and make up. It's very important not to talk about Sha'ban just in a general sense. So I would like to touch upon few points as a practical training course or preparation course rather, which one needs to go through as we live these days of Sha'ban. Prepare your heart is the first one. By sincerely repenting to Allah Azza wa Jal, by approaching the month of Ramadan, having exerted a lot of effort in acts of worship and abandoning and shunning sins. Prepare yourself in the field of knowledge by reading about the jurisprudential rulings pertaining to fasting. Read the details of what are the nullifiers of fasting? What are the pillars of fasting? What are the obligations of fasting? We need to educate ourselves. In da'wah, preparation. For those who are suitable, have the knowledge to give da'wah to others. And if you don't, then attend such circles. On the level of the family, train your family, educate your family, teach them, tell them what they can and what they can't. Tell them things that would ruin or affect their fasting on the level of jihad. Now jihad, in the definition of it being fighting the enemy, is one of the aspects of jihad. But the general definition of jihad being the struggle and the strife, is broader and I'm going to ad address the other aspects of jihad jihad against yourself by controlling it by not allowing it to fulfill every desire at once by forcing it to become ascetic regarding this worldly life in preparation for Ramadan Perhaps this becomes a life code or style for us even after Ramadan. Jihad with one's tongue by controlling it from backbiting, from tail bearing, from foul language. Jihad with one's desire, whether this is related to food or sexual desires. Don't allow yourself to eat everything that it desires. Umar radiallahu anhu said, are you going to go and buy everything that you desire to eat? Jihad against shaitan. Allah Azza wa Jal told us that shaitan is our enemy. Shaitan is your enemy, so take him. Deal with him as an enemy. Don't listen to every whisper and apply it. Allah called him Aduwum Mubin, a clear enemy. He's not disguising, he's not hiding. So why do we deal with him as a close friend? And take it as his advice and do everything he says and whispers with. 
And then I would like to single out the sisters in particular with two points. Point number one, many sisters delay making up the fast. They missed out in Ramadan, the previous Ramadan due their, to their monthly menses. And they find themselves approaching Ramadan not having made up these days. Well, it's time to do it. We still have time. So don't let Sha'ban end and Ramadan begin without having made up, making up your uh, missed days of last month. Another thing which is extremely important for the sisters, don't make your preparation during Sha'ban and your practice during Ramadan as if Ramadan is a banquet, as if it's a month of food. Many sisters Google and you, on YouTube rest new recipes and why? Why do you go out of your way in preparing for the food of Ramadan as if the concept of Ramadan is food, as if the objective of Ramadan is mastering being a good cook. Don't do that to yourselves. Don't deprive yourselves from worshiping Allah. And a call to the brothers in this regard, don't exhaust your wives, your mothers, your sisters in cooking. Be content with whatever you find on the table. And don't make Ramadan a month of invitation every Friday or every weekend or every day inviting a group of friends. They have the right to worship Allah, the ladies, just as you have that right. Don't deprive them from this right. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ So raise to all that is good. And says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And hasten to the forgiveness of your Lord and to a garden the width of which is as wide as the heavens and earth prepared to the righteous or for the righteous. So let's hasten. Glad tidings are to those who hasten to utilize this short lifespan of theirs and prepare for the hereafter. Glad tidings are to those who take advantage of opportunities and seasons of blessings by sending forth to the hereafter. Glad tidings are to those who use their lives so that when the time comes for accountability, they're ready to answer Allah the Almighty. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا